Um, first, we're going to start by talking a little bit about oxygen. It's going to help you better understand ozone. I'm going to get just a little bit technical, but it's meant to help you better understand how ozone works. So oxygen, as a single atom, is deficient in electrons. Most atmospheric oxygen is in the electrical, electrically stable form of O2, where two oxygen molecules are bonded together, and they're sharing two of their electrons in a double bond, and this creates an electrically stable molecule. Ozone is a configuration in which three oxygen molecules are bonded together, and this causes an electrical instability due to a deficiency of electrons. Each oxygen molecule ideally wants eight negatively charged electrons to balance its number of positively charged protons. So with ozone, instead of two happy oxygen molecules sharing two of their electrons, we have three oxygen molecules, with, all with eight positively charged protons, sharing 18 electrons. So this results in a negative charge that shifts between two poles and a positive charge at the third pole. Uh, this instability is what gives ozone its ability to kill all kinds of microorganisms as well as induce various biological changes in cells. So what sort of things can ozone do? Um, ozone is capable of killing bacteria. It does this by disrupting the cell wall with the release of one of its oxygen atoms. In this manner, ozone is also capable of killing fungi and viruses. What other things can ozone do? Ozone can induce the release of many different cellular signaling substances, especially something called interferon gamma, which is a potent immune regulating signal, which can also help to slow the growth and spread of certain cancers. Another way that ozone can help fight cancer is by attacking tumor cells whose defenses are weakened compared to normal cells due to their abnormal metabolism, which we're going to talk a little bit more about later. <laughs> ozone can also upregulate the body's own innate inherent antioxidant mechanism, and it does this by creating a very brief increase in what's called oxidative stress or free radicals, which the body then reacts to. Ozone can actually target damaged and abnormal cells due to these cells having an inherently different electrical gradient charge compared to normal cells. Ozone can increase something called cellular ATP, which is a molecule used by the cells for energy. And this, in turn, will increase oxygen utilization. Oxygen is the limiting factor in physiological activity, as anyone who's had to stop exercising due to a cramp knows. Cramps are caused by something called lactic acidosis. When your muscle's not getting enough oxygen, it has to resort to anaerobic metabolism to keep up. When ozone increases the body's ability to utilize oxygen, as well as providing more oxygen, more energy is available. One of the main comments we hear from clients whose pets have undergone ozone blood therapy is that they appear to have a lot more energy for at least 24 to 48 hours after the procedure, sometimes longer. Ozone. Um, uh, to truly help you understand how ozone works, we need to talk just a little bit about, oops, wait, hang on, I think I might have gotten ahead of myself. Whoops. So this, this is the slide that I should have been on talking about ATP. Sorry about that. Um, and then this is where we are now. So to truly help you understand how ozone works, we need to talk a little bit about biochemistry. Nothing too complex but it is important to understand how ozone benefits cells. So a cell can produce energy using a few different pathways, one of which is called glycolysis, which occurs inside the cell but outside of the mitochondria. The other two pathways are called the Krebs cycle, which is also known as the TCA cycle, 
or in the electron transport chain, which is also known as oxidative phosphorylation. Now, before you get all, ah, biochemistry, I just want to show you this so you can see that oxidative phosphorylation, aka electron transport chain, is far more efficient at producing energy than either of the other two pathways because it creates 34 molecules of ATP versus two molecules for each of the other two pathways. So the Krebs cycle and the electron transport can only be carried out within the mitochondria. Both of these pathways require several steps during which a molecule called NADH is reduced to NAD+. Reduced means a hydrogen is taken away. So it is this supply of NAD+, that is the limiting factor for all cellular energy production. And I promise you that's all the biochemistry we're going to talk about. As cells age, the ratio of NAD plus to NADH declines, meaning the cell has less NAD plus and more NADH. This is because NAD plus gets used up in processes for DNA repair for which the need increases with age. This is true in humans as well. Uh, if this critical ion is used up and the electrical gradient is allowed to equalize, the mitochondria will shut down and the cell will soon die. The only way that cells can recoup some NAD plus is to start a process called glycolysis, which is, as we just saw, a very inefficient way to produce energy because it only creates two molecules of ATP versus 34 with normal respiration or the oxidative phosphorylation. Interestingly, glycolysis is the same way that cancer cells produce energy because it requires less oxygen. Once this cycle is begun in normal cells, it perpetuates a low oxygen state or hypoxia and produces lactic acid, creating an environment ripe for cancer to begin. Glycolysis also results in many of the effects we associate with aging, such as muscle, loss of muscle mass and fatigue. It's also been determined the ratio of NAD plus to NADH is low in all chronic disease states. Decreased NAD plus can also lead to pro-inflammatory state and can decrease the cell's ability to repair damage. So NAD plus in adequate amounts can actually help decrease the survival of tumor cells because the tumor cells have less NAD plus than NADH while normal cells have the opposite. So if you have more NAD plus, you can feed your normal cells and the cancer cells really aren't partaking. Just a summary of what ozone is capable of doing. It can stimulate oxygen utilization and increase the efficiency of cellular respiration. It helps to curtail something called the Warburg effect, which is, as we just talked about, a functional hypoxia created when a cell has to resort to glycolysis because it doesn't have enough NAD+. Um, and this particular um, effect actually perpetuates cancer. So it's one of the ways ozone can help fight cancer. Ozone can stimulate cytokines or cellular signals to help activate the immune system to destroy bacteria, viruses, fungi, and cancer. It has the actual capability to cleanse and kill bacteria, viruses, and fungi. It invigorates and increases the innate antioxidant processes. Ozone can also decrease inflammatory mediators and substances that increase pain, and it has a pain and inflammation relieving effect. Ozone can directly <laughs> preferentially attack abnormal or cancerous cells due to their altered electrical charge and their altered metabolism. This slide is actually referring to hyperthermic treatment on the left. Um, 
but it demonstrates the difference in electrical charge between normal and cancerous cells. And this other diagram on the right, I found kind of interesting, even though it's talking about some new drug. Um, but it, it says, this new drug called dichloroacetate switches the mitochondria and cancer cells back on, so they halt glycolysis and start making energy in mitochondria again. The self-destruct mechanism is then activated and the cells wither and die. And this is exactly what ozone therapy does, but without any potential adverse side effects or organ toxicity. Conditions for which ozone therapy may be useful include cancer, resistant bacterial infections, skin, urinary infections, pneumonia, we have treated them all, viral infections, feline leukemia, feline immunodeficiency virus, uh, or FIP, which is feline um, infectious peritonitis, degenerative diseases such as degenerative myelopathy, toxic situations, snake venom or bacterial toxemia, immune compromise, or an overactive immune system. The many ways that ozone therapy can be administered include uh, major autohemotherapy. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. Uh, minor autohemotherapy, ozonated subcutaneous fluid, rectal insufflation, which is very useful with microbiome restorative therapy. Uh, stay tuned for that webinar coming up uh, in May. Ozone can be injected beneath the skin or into acupuncture points. Ozonated oil can be applied topically. Cupping of infected areas or tumors. Ozone can be inhaled as long as it is bubbled through oil. Uh, ozone that is not bubbled through oil is irritating to the lungs, but when you bubble it through certain oils, it can then be safely inhaled. Um, oral ozonated water can be taken internally and limbs can be bagged for wounds where the skin is greatly damaged or to help fractures heal and we can directly infuse ozone into the ears or what's called oral insufflation. We're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about ultraviolet light. The use of UV light in medicine is known as biophotonic therapy. This slide refers primarily to humans who help produce vitamin D using UV light. Our, our animals, our furry friends can't do that. Um, therefore, some of the things here don't necessarily apply to our critters, such as support healthy bones, reduce cancer risk, increase height, boost immunity. Uh, not that, that UV light can't do some of these things, but it certainly doesn't do it using vitamin D. So what can ultraviolet light do? Well, UV light kills bacteria, fungi, viruses. Uh, it's able to do this because these organisms have more photosensitivity than mammalian cells, and so it can enter the organism and damage its DNA. What kind of other effects is ultraviolet light capable of inducing? Well, it, it can modulate the immune system, which means if it needs to be turned up, it can turn it up. If it needs to be turned down, it can turn it down. UV light can improve the flow of blood and the elasticity or the ability to bend for red blood cells. It can increase the ability of the blood to carry oxygen, and it can help decrease inflammation and, in turn, help relieve pain. Ultraviolet light is very protective for the cardiovascular system and can help regulate blood pressure, and it can inactivate all types of toxins, even the most toxic substances. We're talking, you know, potentially things like anthrax or um, fungal toxins, tetanus toxin, anything. It's been used. It can inactivate those. Conditions for which UV light therapy may be useful include viral infections, bacterial infections, respiratory disorders, inflammatory conditions, um, circulatory heart conditions, blood pressure, autoimmune disorders, and of course, cancer. So how much UV light and what wavelength? 
Because um, as we all know, too much UV light can be harmful. You see this everywhere. However, what nobody really tells us is that just the right amount of UV light can be very beneficial. Most bacteria, fungi, and viruses are killed in the UVC wavelength, about 260 nanometers. The UVA and UVB wavelengths in specific amounts are able to elicit the responses and effects that we've just discussed. Our machine is especially calibrated to deliver a very specific amount of UV light energy. That amount is 1,000 joules per centimeter squared using both all three, UVA, UVB, and UVC, which through research, this has been determined to be the ideal amount for the effects that we desire. So why use ozone and ultraviolet light together? Well, the synergism, they work very well together. The UV therapy can help augment the effects of ozone. Uh, and as it the um, and the ozone augments the UV therapy as it can damage and kill weakened cells, especially in the case of cancer. Using both at the same time is cost effective. Uh, both are safe with very few contraindications. For ozone, the major one is just um, if the patient has some trouble clotting their blood, then ozone may not be the best treatment to use at that time because we typically, uh, at least with major autohemotherapy, need to use an anticoagulant. So this is a photo of the model of UV blood machine and our ozone generator. So on the left of the slide is our UV machine, and on the right is our ozone generator, which is very, they're both very specifically calibrated to a very precise amount uh, of either UV light or of ozone. And so next we're going to talk a little bit about the process. And this pertains pretty much to the, the two types of, of blood therapy. Some of the other processes are very, very simple, so I'm not really going to go into them too much. Uh, but this is the process for either major or minor autohemotherapy. It entails six steps. First, blood is drawn from the patient. So typically for major autohemotherapy, we're going to draw about 5 to 7 mLs per 10 pounds of body weight. And for minor autohemotherapy, we might do 1 to 3 mLs per 10 pounds of body weight. Then we um, mix the blood with some saline in order to dilute it because when it's going through the UV machine, it actually goes through this spiral thing to make sure that every cell in there gets exposed to the proper amount of UV light. And that process usually takes 20 to 30 minutes. And it's, again, at that very specific amount of 1,000 joules per meter squared. Ozone is then generated with our generator and drawn up and then added to the blood. The ozone dose is also very specific and is determined by the doctor. Usually we'll start a little bit low and then try to go a little higher, just making sure that the patient can tolerate it and is not having any kind of an adverse reaction, um, like such as lethargy. You can have a little too much ozone, although it's pretty difficult. So ozone is then infused into the bag or the syringe. Syringe would be for the minor, bag for major, and blood is then infused back into the patient. Uh, for major autohemotherapy, it goes back directly into the vein, and for minor autohemotherapy, it goes back usually in the muscle. I just want to take a few minutes to tell you about some cases that we've successfully helped with ozone therapy. The first one is Nico. And so Nico is an 11 year old male neutered Boston Terrier. And before Nico started receiving ozone therapy with UV, he was given a very poor prognosis. This was last July. He was seen at another veterinarian. His abdomen was severely distended. He had all this severe edema. You can see in this picture how swollen his, his, hind, paw, his hind legs were. And he was very lethargic, and he wasn't eating very well. So he, his 
diagnosis was not concrete, but he was strongly suspected to have some sort of cancer in his abdomen. And um, the veterinarian thought maybe he'd live a few more months. After his first few treatments, the edema and vasculitis or inflammation of his vessels greatly subsided. You can see um, the picture on the right is just the following week. And all of that edema is gone. Um, by his second treatment, he was trying to bite us, which was Nico's normal personality. First treatment, he didn't care. But the second treatment, he definitely felt better. He was trying to bite, and he's been trying to bite us ever since, though we don't let him. <laughs> uh, so he's not quote unquote cured, but he's doing really well because it's been eight months since he was given maybe just a couple of months to live. He's a sweetie, even though he tries to bite us. Here's another case. Ikut was a 19-year-old male neutered domestic short hair cat with chronic ear infections. Uh, lots of wax, pus, and odor. Medications only helped so much and they were really a challenge to administer. After starting ozone treatments directly into his ears, the odor and pus went away and everything greatly improved. Um, he, well, we treated him for, I think, close to a year. Um, but he's unfortunately he's in heaven now. Uh, well, so now that you can see the power of ozone in UV, let's just sort of recap what kinds of things are useful for treating. So ozone alone can certainly be used for skin wounds and irritations, lung problems, dysbiosis to sterilize the colon prior to microbiome restorative therapy. Again, stay tuned for that one in May. Uh, ear infections, cancer, uh, intervertebral disc disease, it can be injected directly into acupoints. Urinary infections, we have successfully uh, put ozone directly into the bladder. We did have to sedate the patient because it's rather uncomfortable, but it can be done. And the infection was successfully cleared. The patient ended up having other issues, but, uh, and for viral infections. Now, when we use ozone and UV blood together, they can be very useful for cancer, allergies, autoimmune disease, degenerative diseases such as degenerative myelopathy, intoxication or toxins, viral infections, and circulatory disorders including hypertension and cardiac disease. Um, one more little word about uh, UV. Uh, UV is actually used for uh, sterilizing, if you will, human blood for transfusions as an alternative to gamma irradiation. So this is not just um, stuff that is not researched. They're actually using these things, and, and they know that it also helps to prevent what they call graft versus host disease. So when something foreign is implanted into another patient, it helps to prevent rejection. Just wanted to mention that May is Pet Cancer Awareness Month. And so since we're talking so much about cancer and these two modalities used together, and we had some success with helping them fight cancer, um, that, that uh, May is Pet Cancer Awareness Month. And I actually want to mention <laughs> one more patient. I added her to my presentation at the last minute, but I would already uploaded my presentation to the website. Sorry, Jen, that I don't have the pictures, but I want to take just a minute and talk about uh, one of my staff members' dogs, Pally. Pally is a, I guess, approximately 10-year-old. We don't know exactly how old Pally is. 10-year-old female sp spaniel mix who started to drink and urinate a lot, and we found out she had really high calcium. And then after seeing the specialists and having lots of diagnostics, she was diagnosed with a tumor not only of her thyroid, but also of her nasal cavity. And they basically gave her a, a pretty poor prognosis. And she has just started on ozone and UV blood therapy. And prior to it, she was hardly eating anything. Uh, after her first treatment, she's, she's shown some improvement in her attitude, her energy, and her appetite. Uh, she's also getting ozone inhaled directly into her nose, best to get it directly to the tumor site. And we're just really, really hopeful that it's going to help her out because it seems like it's made her feel better already. 
Any questions? Okay, so Marsha is asking how much does it cost and how many treatments are usually necessary. I'm going to defer for cost to, to well, I guess I, I could tell you a little bit about the cost. And it depends a little bit whether it's major or minor. But I don't want to go into too much details about cost. Um, it's probably somewhere in the range of between 250 and 300 per treatment uh, because it does take a lot of time. But if you look at the cost of something like chemotherapy with tons of side effects, and it can make your dog just feel very sick. It can beat down your dog's or, or cat's immune system, beating their white blood cells down. Ozone and UV are never going to do that. They're going to help your pet's immune system. Then you know, it actually ends up costing less. As far as how many treatments are necessary, it depends on the condition. Some things might be able to be fixed with, say, four to six treatments or sent into quote unquote remission. Um, with Nico, he's coming about every two weeks or so for the past eight months. So his is definitely going to have to be ongoing because whatever he has, and I'm sure it's cancer, I just don't know exactly what, it's, it's, it's not stopping, it's not letting up, so we have to keep helping his system out. Um, one other thing, I'm <laughs> kind of getting ahead of myself. Uh, there'll be a, a, another webinar probably talking about this in the future is we tested his vitamin D level and he was the lowest we've seen of all patients we've tested and at least three out of four patients that we test are coming back low. Vitamin D is another vital factor with any kind of cancer. Vitamin D is so, so important for the proper functioning of the immune system. Okay. So, so yes, I was talking about for major autohemotherapy. That's the big one. Minor autohemotherapy does cost less. It may be a little less effective. Uh, we haven't probably been using it enough to really determine. Um, so any other questions? <laughs> Nancy, you know, um, we could certainly try, Nancy. You have to weigh a little bit whether he would be too stressed with all of the blood drying and the IV catheter. So, Nancy, I'm going to ask if you might, maybe we can, we can discuss this uh, on Thursday or Friday, um, and, and I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll be giving you a call. So... I have a question, would treating a mast cell tumor be minor or major? You know, with a mast cell, if something is external, we can certainly, I would recommend that we consider doing at least a few treatments of major autohemotherapy. But when something is external, we actually have this glass cup that we can place over the tumor. And it's got a little kind of outlet for, for waste gas, if you will. But, and we bathe the whole tumor in ozone and it helps to get it directly to the tumor cells so that it can help fight the cancer. Um, well, if a lipoma, a lipoma is an abnormal growth, although they are benign abnormal growths, um, I I'm, I'm, haven't really used it for lipoma because typically they don't really cause a problem, but um, certainly useful for mast cell tumors. Anybody else have a question? Any comments on my cute little kitten? I couldn't resist putting that in. <laughs> the kitten has a question. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope I didn't give everybody information overload. I really tried not to get too technical. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions about whether or not these things can help your pet, please, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We're really, really proud and excited to be offering these treatments. And, um, yeah, thanks so much for joining us. So we'll, we'll give a few more minutes. I see a couple more people typing. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, everybody. 
and uh, yeah, have a have a great night. Um, so, all right. I guess no more questions. <laughs> if you have a question that we haven't addressed, or if you think of something later on, please don't hesitate to email us, um, or you can even send us a text to our our mobile number, which. Um, if you don't know, you can call us and ask for it. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. All right. I'm going to say good night. <laughs>